So I'll talk to you briefly about what DMSO actually is. They don't actually know. DMSO stands for dimethyl sulfoxide. It's apparently a byproduct of paper manufacturing. And uh, it's a simple molecule that's been around since the 50s. It's had its applications for different things. It's a kind of a solvent. And um, I'm guessing it comes from turpentine. It might be a terpenoid, which could be uh, possible. I don't know if that's the case. Terpenoids are extremely antioxidant when safely taken. There may not be, all the terpenoids might not be safe to take. Um, but it appears that DMSO is. And DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, has been used topically for decades for inflammation, especially in joints in athletes and athletic animals. A horse with uh, some injury to a ligament or pastern or whatever, the farmers used to put uh, DMSO gel or DMSO liquid on those joints and it would provide considerable relief. Um, arthritis and arthritis in people, injuries in athletes, tendon and ligament, uh, as well as joint injuries. Um, if you put DMSO on the outside of the outside of the knee or whatever, it reduces inflammation in the knee, making it feel better. To the extent that um, Olympic athletes are all familiar with what DMSO is. Uh, additionally, there's a product on Amazon.com called Penetrex. P-E-N-E-T-R-E-X, Penetrex, and it has DMSO in it, and it's a topical. It's got some other anti-inflammatories and things in it. Now, they may only be using the DMSO as a penetrant to allow the medications from the Penetrex to get into the system, but DMSO all by itself is a pretty powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. Um, Modern uses for DMSO, especially in medicine, it's used considerably. If you got, um, let's say that you were getting a liver transplant um, when you were uh, lying in the hospital waiting for your liver and they came bustling in with the liver, um, the liver would actually be floating in DMSO because DMSO stabilizes cells against breakdown. The studies that they were running on it were called reperfusion injuries. And that's where a cell is responding to extreme, if not terminal stress. So what, what they used to do basically is they would take a mouse and they would cut the blood supply to the mouse's liver off. And then they would uh, give an injection of DMSO in the blood vessel, uh, intravenous DMSO. Then they would open the liver back up and allow blood supply back to the liver. And then in other mice that they did the same thing where they deprived the liver of, of uh, blood, um, they would reperfuse that without DMSO, and what they found is, is that those animals that got DMSO before reperfusion, their livers were fine, and the ones that didn't experienced a certain degree of liver damage from the, um, the lack of blood. So uh, a lot of the studies on DMSO were done um, talking about reperfusion injuries. And I mean, you can look this stuff up. I mean, I'm not just pulling this out of my ass. Um, if you jump on um, PubMed and those... Uh, areas you can see the research that was done on that. Um, there's another area that DMSO is effective when used intravenously and that is in amyloidosis both in the kidney and the brain and it turns out that some of the dementia and Alzheimer's changes in the brain have to do with the deposition of amyloid um, and I can explain what amyloid is um, but amyloid can settle out in the kidneys and start blocking the kidney and DMSO intravenously has the ability to break down the amyloid, but also to decrease its deposition. So let me describe what amyloid is. When your body fights things in the bloodstream, which could be um, any form of antigen, uh, foreign proteins uh, over your lifetime, your antibodies complex these bits of protein and these antigens. So here's like a little virus and here's your blood protein. And it comes along and it grabs it and it forms a, a complex antibody antigen complex where you've got this and it's all protein so you've got a binder protein and then you got the virus protein and they're basically in a death struggle and they can go into the brain and these little particles of protein activated complexes basically can go into the brain or into the kidney where they just get filtered and stuck like snow drifts of this these protein complexes well 
they can't just be protein complexes forever. The virus eventually dies and the, um, the uh, antibody or natural killer cell or whatever eventually dies. So then they really just kind of turn into a smooth layer of protein kind of made out of dead um, um, immune complexes. The snow drifts of this latent protein that's just being deposited over the years in the brain and in the kidney. And they call that protein sludge, basically. They call it amyloid. And uh, apparently it's this deposition of amyloid in the brain and uh, that causes uh, some of the symptoms of dementia and Alzheimer's and deposition in the kidney that causes uh, uh, kidney failure later in life. So uh, they had at one time considered those issues reversible, uh, irreversible, and maybe they are, but when you give DMSO, apparently it decreases those amyloid deposits as well as decreasing the deposition of same. Again, I don't use it for that. I think that DMSO administered um, and um, is a powerful antioxidant function, and antioxidant functions basically offset some of the uh, oxidative processes that happen in every single cell in the process of living. Um, your cells produce in the, in the um, activation of sing every single enzyme system and every single thing that they do, they consume oxygen and they produce carbon dioxide. And that accumulation of carbon dioxide also is associated with different metabolic byproducts, all of which are oxidative. So when you go in there with DMSO, you're basically, well, not really detoxing because that term is overused, but you're providing antioxidant uh, offset to some of those processes. And what they found was that after they gave DMSO to these mice for their reperfusion injury studies, so they found that those cells were stabilized for a week. And they've got a pretty high metabolism. So if a person was going to engage DMSO therapy, they wouldn't necessarily have to be doing it every day. I don't even know what the consequences of every day would be. But uh, apparently once a week would be sufficient to maintain the antioxidant benefits, if only waningly, uh, out towards the seven-day mark. So a person wouldn't have to undergo that. I also wonder sometimes whether a person was, if they were applying it topically on the weekly basis or topically on a daily basis, whether that would be somehow equivalent to um, systemic administration of DMSO on the weekly. So a person could just get up and put a roll on DMSO on certain parts of their body as a topical and by the end of the week, what, get 12 cc's of DMSO through the skin over the course of the week? Who knows?